Welcome to Feel Good Fridays, everybody. We're uh, here at NECAT. We encourage the Nashville community to feel good every Friday. Uh, I am Big Fella, one of your hosts today, along with my fellow NECAT board member, Shauna Lynn Brandmeyer. So today we are talking to the amazing Dr. Kenya Waller with the Legal Aid Society of Nashville. Dr. Kenya, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. No, thank you for being had. You know, mm -hmm. we couldn't do this without you. <laughs> we definitely couldn't. Oh, Shauna Lynn, will you say hi to the people and go ahead and uh, get this thing started? Sure. Uh, hi, everybody. Thanks for joining NECAT and Legal Aid today. I guess we should probably kick it off with tell people a little bit about Legal Aid Society and how long they've been serving the community and, and kind of your goals and mission um, of Legal Aid. Absolutely. Again, like I said, thank you guys for having me. I mean, anytime we have an opportunity to share with the public uh, what it is we do, we are thrilled to do so. No matter how many you know opportunities I have to speak about legal aid, I always find people who uh, are like, oh my gosh, I didn't know you were there. I didn't even know that was a thing. I didn't know it was available. And so whenever I get an opportunity to do something like this, to share it, I, I'm, I'm all over it. So thank you. thanks again for having me. So the Legal Aid Society is Tennessee's largest nonprofit law firm. We are a nonprofit law firm. Um, we are um, an organization that's been around since 1968. And our mission is to advance, defend, and enforce the legal rights of low-income and vulnerable families to secure for them the basic necessities of life. Um, I will tell you that uh, we are, again, a nonprofit, which means we're not a governmental entity. And so we, um, we are separate in that way. And we also do civil cases. And I say that because I'm distinguishing it from criminal cases. So if you are looking for a, I guess, free lawyer uh, for your criminal case, you get a public defender or you may be appointed a defense attorney. Um, well, the fact of the matter is in America, unfortunately, there is no right to an attorney if you have a civil case. A lot of times you hear where, um, you know, the Miranda rights, uh, you have the right to remain silent. If you, um, anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law, blah, blah, blah. And usually when you hear that, if you watch CSI or Law and Order, any of those things, you see, you know, the police officer saying it as they're ducking someone's head into the back of a cop car, right? Well, that's because it's criminal. Um, those rights do not apply if you're being evicted. Those rights don't apply if you're trying to defend child custody or child support. Those rights don't apply if someone took advantage of you or scammed you. Those things only apply if you're being charged with a crime. And so that's why nonprofits like the Legal Aid Society are important because we then offer those same free legal, civil legal services on the civil side um, where the penalty may be money or safety, things like that. That's where we get involved. And so even in that, however, we still have limits in terms of what we do. We don't do cases that, like I say, are criminal. We also don't do cases where uh, there may be a large recovery. I kind of tell people if it's something that an attorney on a billboard would probably cover, we don't. We typically cover those cases that people honestly can't afford, you know, to pay. If you're, you know, in a car wreck, you're going to get a recovery and you can pay the attorney out of the recovery. But if you're getting, you know, if you're needing a bankruptcy, then you're probably not going to be able to pay a lawyer also. That's, that's where we come in. And we try and do it on the front end. We try and catch um, problems while they're small. What would you say is probably the largest area that legal aid finds that, mainly Middle Tennessee, because you do cover more than just Nashville. Absolutely. Um, what are some of the cases you see a lot of, just so people know, is it evictions? Is it divorce? Bankruptcies? I mean, what what's kind of the feel for what you see the most? Sure. Um, probably a good 35 uh, to 40 percent of our cases is actually family law, um, mm. whether that's uh, uh, child custody associated with a divorce, domestic violence, orders of protection, and so forth. 
Um, that that's really what we see the majority of. But closely behind that are our housing cases, the evictions that you know you see are happening now, even during this pandemic, um, and then consumer protection cases where. I don't know, it could be the contractor who, you know, told you that they were going to fix the roof and somehow took off with the money but didn't fix the roof. Um, we get involved in those cases because, like I said earlier, there's no legal right to an attorney if, you're fi if you find yourself in that, in that situation. But you did mention, and, and you're absolutely correct, we don't just cover uh, Davidson County. Uh, as I mentioned, we are Tennessee's largest nonprofit law firm, and as a result, we cover 48 of Tennessee's 95 counties. Um, we have eight offices across Middle Tennessee. Those offices are in Nashville, which is our principal place. But we also have offices in Cookville, Clarksville, Columbia, Gallatin, Tullahoma, Murfreesboro, Oak Ridge, and I'm missing one. But There's eight, one more. Somebody's gonna kill me because I'm, I'm, I'm missing <laughs> one. But. It'll hit me in a moment. But they can find it on the website, right? They can absolutely find it on the website, and it's super simple. It's las.org, which stands for Legal Aid there Society. That's las.org, and you get there, and you can find all of our offices, which are there to assist, or you can call our 800 number, which is 1-800-238-1443, um, and speak with one of our uh, uh, receptionists there who are very happy to take the call. and if we're unable to assist with a particular legal issue you have, then we're able to possibly refer you to an entity that may be able to help you. For example, if it's a criminal case and you call us. Talk about the eligibility of um, how someone would know that they're eligible to work with Legal Aid Society on an issue. Sure. Generally speaking, for our cases, we assist people who are at 125% of federal poverty guidelines. 125% would be, for example, a family of one earning um, $1,329 a month, which is just a little bit above minimum wage. Uh, if it's a family of four, uh, a family income of $32,750 a year, which comes out to about $2,700. Uh, $30 a year. That being said, however, if you earn more than that, there are uh, deductions that we'll take and consider. For example, if you are uh, having transportation costs that you're paying going back and forth to work, we'll deduct that from your income. Or if you have child care uh, that you pay for out of your income, we'll deduct those out too. And if you're over 60, we actually don't have a threshold at all uh, for the services we offer. Uh, we just kind of take a priority of those persons who, you know, are in the most dire straits that we try and try and assist. Um, I think that's a good distinction too. Of yeah. um, so, for for people that are saying, "Hey, this might be something I need to to look into," it's probably best that they call, mm -hmm. and somebody can talk them through eligibility and services. That's correct. We are um, a team of approximately 102 attor uh, attorneys and staff, uh, about 40, 45 attorneys uh, on staff. But we also know that we uh, could not possibly meet the need with 45 attorneys of the entire Middle Tennessee. And so we leverage the private bar. Um, a lot of times people are like, well, I'll just get a pro bono attorney. And they don't realize they're actually still talking about us. And pro bono attorneys, which is different from a staff attorney at legal aid, a pro bono attorney is a private attorney who has said that I will take that case for free. An attorney who normally might charge $200 an hour, $400 an hour, has said, hey, legal aid, I want to do some good. I'm, I'll be willing to take that case for free. But as I tell a lot of people, pro bono is not free. It takes someone who has the expertise it takes someone to match the person who has the expertise with the person who has the need. It's kind of like you wouldn't want the, you know, the obstetrician to, you know, do podiatry work or the foot doctor to do brain surgery. You want the attorney who knows how to do what you need <laughs> to be matched with the problem that you have. And that's what we do. We have a, a very uh, a sophisticated volunteer lawyers program that coordinates the matching of private attorneys out in the community with someone who may call us and say, hey, I need to be represented to get this conservatorship 
um, for my for my mother who's not doing well. Uh, we would match that person with a private attorney who would uh, who has agreed to take their case and not charge anything to do it. And we don't charge either. Our services are absolutely free, 100% free. What we may charge, if anything, is if there might be filing fees or something like that. Those don't go to us. That goes to the court. Um, and, but as far as our services, they're 100% free. And, and along the lines of those strategic partnerships, um, those are done with local bar associations, the Tennessee Bar Association. Kind of talk about how you how the legal aid has built those relationships and and how you you work with those private bar associations and attorneys. Like I said, that they are the lifeblood. Um, with 50, 45 attorneys on staff and a poverty population that in this pandemic has exceeded four hundred and forty thousand people in Middle Tennessee. Again, it, it's not possible for us to 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 reach everybody. And so those private bar attorneys who have reached out we then work with. So um, we, tr we will train those attorneys if it's something, a uh, particular service that needs to be trained on, or those firms will, based on their own expertise, agree to take on certain subject matters. Those firms are what we call our pillar law firms. And those pillar law firms are those big law firms in town that honestly, most of our clients would never be able to, to afford on a, on a normal basis. But for example, we have one firm that uh, will take all of our adoption cases. And so if a, someone calls and needs an adoption, we won't do it in house, but we will contact that partner who said, hey, send us the adoptions, we'll do those. We have an, another law firm that uh, takes on eviction cases. And if it's something that, you know, if we're at capacity or something like that, that firm will uh, take those eviction cases. So what it's uh, Waller, Lance, and Dorton Davis law firm in town, Bassberry and Sims, Baker Donaldson. And I know I'm gonna get in trouble for naming names, but those are just some of the big names uh, firms in town um, that have agreed to take cases. Bone McAllister and the list, the list goes on. And we are super proud of our, of our uh, network of attorneys. And we've been doing it for years. Um, actually, uh, the Legal Aid Society was born out of those same attorneys in the Nashville Bar Association. And in 1968, uh, our organization, 52 years, 53 years ago now, um, came into existence. And so we've been doing this for, for over 50 years. When people think about that, of like, these are active private attorneys in the, in the bar that are, that are assisting and helping people. I think that's a great point. So I had a quick question. Sure. So how do the attorneys who work for Legal Aid Society, how do y'all pick y'all attorneys? This is a random question. It's just random. No, absolutely. And it's about, it, it, it's, uh, well, I don't know if I'll say it's a valid one, but it's a good one because I, I do know the, the, you know, the perception. Unfortunately, you know, a lot of times people perceive that if it's free, that somehow, mm, how good is it, you know? Um, but our attorneys are, you know, screened and picked just like any other law firm. And to be honest with you, quite a few uh, uh, attorneys seek it out. Uh, for example, uh, Michelle Obama worked for a legal aid firm. Um, and, and, you know, it's a part of the history of many of the attorneys uh, in Nashville. Most, uh, many of them started at legal aid. Um, but I mean, we have attorneys who, went to law school at Harvard, at Princeton, uh, at Yale. We have uh, attorneys who went to Columbia. Uh, I myself graduated from the University of Mississippi uh, School of Law, uh, Ole Miss, as, as uh, it's, it's called. Um, and, and we seek the person who we seek as attorneys are the people who have the credentials, first of all, they're good at what they do, but secondly, have a passion for the work. We, we are very interested, pro almost primarily, on people who have a passion for ensuring that the little man is no longer the little man. We want gladiators who come here with a mission to change the dynamic between the haves and the have-nots. Yeah, that's so real. That is so real. So do y'all ever have, do uh, primarily attorneys who 
work for legal aid, are they coming out of school or, or do you have some lawyers who practice and then like have a moment where it's like, you know what, I want to go do this. We have all of the above. We have law students who volunteer with us, catch the bug and decide that they want to make this a career. Um, we have an attorney here who's been here all 53 years. <laughs> really? Uh, he was Amazing. Here, he was here when we started. But I think what makes it special, uh, our attorneys, is because we do this all day, every day, we know it. And we know it better than anyone else because this is what we do. We, there is no one who knows poverty law, and that's what it's called, better than us because this is what we do. And, it, and it's exciting to me because I, I my, my pet, my, pet peeve, I guess, is, is bullies. I, that's my thing. That's just, ah, that's what gets, that, that's what gets my goat. <laughs> bullies mm -hmm. get my goat. And so in my practice, I represented victims of domestic violence that um, prior to coming into the executive director role, that's what I did. Um, and it was nothing more satisfying for me to, than to stand beside a, you know, shivering, shaking, you know, woman who you know, literally ran out of her home with the clothes on her back, um, with her kids in tow, because she's not going to leave without her kids, and is just looking for shelter and safety. And the truth of the matter is, in every case, I mean, she loves her significant other. I mean, there's no doubt about that. She just wants the violence to stop. You know, just, just don't hit me. <laughs> I love you. Just don't hit me. Did you get picked on when you were in elementary school or something? What happened? What happened? Yeah, look, what you... happened to, was my backstory. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't know if I got picked on, but I definitely wasn't a cool kid. You know what I mean? I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't the cool kid. And, uh, but I was the one that said that, you know, one day, you know, you'll work for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you were the that's focus kid. Yeah, were that's how it goes. Kid. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a really good um, segue into kind of talk about how legal aid has your pro bono work and, and how that has shifted in a pandemic. Absolutely encourage you to call our 800 number, 800-238-1443, and, and as well as our website at, at las.org. Uh, but just like a lot of uh, entities, uh, we had to pivot, you know, during the pandemic. Um, we we kind of got that double whammy of the tornado and then right behind that, bam, you know, COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And so we, we all had to adjust. And one of the big adjustments we made is that we moved our walk-in clinics um, to phone-in clinics. Uh, we had been doing a little over 70 uh, walk-in clinics um, each year where uh, across our service area um, in, in each of our service areas and, and multiple in Nashville. Uh, just because of the size of the, the community. And we, we pivoted to phone clinics. And so now people can call our, um, our offices and uh, speak with an attorney. And on our website, we have when our clinic hours are that you can call in and speak with an attorney regarding your civil legal matter um, for free. There is literally no charge. And again, uh, those private attorneys in the private bar those attorneys that, you know, charge anywhere from $450 an hour who are answering the phone and answering those same legal questions that you would, you would have to pay for uh, to get answered. With our walk-in clinics, we would do about 70. And during this year of pandemic, we've actually done 150 of those phone-in uh, legal clinics. So we've literally doubled it. Um, and, and, you know, I guess like a lot, other, a lot of other entities, we're realizing where the efficiencies lie and which things are going to live on beyond this pandemic. Um, exactly. That agility. Absolutely. Attorneys are continuing to work. And I know a lot of people are hearing, oh, the courts are closed. The courts are closed. The courts are still operating. Nothing, business has not stopped. It's just kind of changed in terms of how they're doing it. Um, but the cases are still being heard. Um, and some people still are going to court. For example, again, domestic violence victims needing order, an order of protection, which is like a restraining order. Um, you still go to court for that. The courts are still open, the judge is still there, and they're still hearing those cases. We've talked about pro bono, private bar, some of the areas, eligibility. Anything else you'd like for, for our Middle Tennessee 
viewers to know about legal aid? One of the uh, programs that I, I love the most that we do is our reentry program. And that's a program for formerly incarcerated persons. Um, with that program, we do exactly what I said. We help uh, in restoring driver's license. If driver's licenses have been suspended, we expunge records. Uh, we work very closely with, uh, with Judge uh, Rachel Bell with the Music City Community Court uh, in terms of uh, providing uh, attorneys to assist with those uh, expungements. We help with uh, uh, certificates of employability so that those persons who may have been formerly incarcerated who are seeking to get jobs can have a certificate of employability that allows an employer to hire them without any liability. Because that's what a lot of times employers, they don't want to hire someone who's been previously convicted of a crime because they don't want the liability that comes with it. And so we help them get that certificate of employability that says that if you hire this person, you aren't liable for anything that may occur. We also help with voter restoration, and that's been big, you know, here lately, where a lot of persons, you know, formerly incarcerated have wanted to get their voting rights back so that they can actually vote in these elections, and we assist with that as well. Uh, we actually recently, through that program, uh, created a, an app uh, where you can go on, and, uh, and you can access that app through our website, but you can go onto the app and um, be able to determine if the matters on your criminal record are expungeable. Can they be expunged? And if so, we then direct you to where you can go to actually get that done or the process to get that done. Um, and that, that's just one of our programs. Uh, we have another uh, program for youth um, during this time of, of, real, of real awakening around some of the racial inequities that are happening in our country. We're even more aware of uh, some of the um, inequities that are happening in the school systems as well around uh, the higher rate of minorities who are um, suspended or expelled uh, from school and are not receiving uh, the educational support that they need. And we assist with those, um, whether it's uh, looking a little deeper into the expulsion or suspension or helping parents create uh, IEPs or individual education plans for those students so that they can still excel academically in the midst of, you know, whatever their current circumstance may be. I, I could go on and on. I really could just, I mean, consumer protection, you know, that, that lemon car you bought that's not working that they told you was mm -hmm. supposed to work or, you know, the, like I say, the contractor who, who, uh, who was supposed to fix whatever and it didn't get done. And I tell people all the time, what, what lawyers offer is we are that articulate, clear cut voice to get people to hear what you were trying to say all the time. You, they just didn't hear you. You know, you were saying it, that's exactly what I said. A lot of times lawyers can, you know, speak the language that people need to hear. <laughs> And then, of course, if we don't speak the language, you know, there's always the law degree that helps it. <laughs> you know, so, somewhere in there, somehow, you know, the law degree kind of makes things happen a little more quickly mm -hmm. you know, than they otherwise would. I would have known about the Legal Aid Society a few years ago. I went by, I had to go into the IRS and they froze my account and I went in there and passed out on the floor and started crying. I said, oh, Lord, please don't do this to me, Lord. <laughs> they end up helping me because they thought I was having a heart attack. That is what we do. That is See, big fella, legal aid could have helped you with that. <laughs> yeah, they could. I was, on the, I was on the floor shaking. I didn't know what happened. It hit me like a ton of bricks. Yeah. Legal Aid Society. What's the website again in case I run into another problem? Absolutely. LAS.org. LAS.org. That's it. Yeah. LAS. And the phone number one more time? That number is 800-238-1443. 800-238-1443. And um, like I said, that th those cases we do offering compromises. I mean, we've settled $100,000 debts for literally $25. I mean, th that team is amazing um, because wow. they understand that, they understand the laws. I don't understand them, but they do. <laughs> <laughs> I think that is a great way to, to end our Feel Good Friday segment of um, what we've learned today is just legal aid is a great resource for our community of passionate um, 
subject matter expert who can can assist anybody in the Nashville area that needs them. So we encourage anybody, if you need legal aid, give them a call. Uh, they're glad to talk to you, walk through eligibility and, and what's going on. So I'd, I'd uh, big fella. I, I'd be remiss if I didn't m mention this one thing because my development team would kill me. We are a nonprofit. And so yep. also on our website at las.org, if you'd like to contribute to the great work that we do, you can absolutely do so there. Or if you'd like to become a uh, monthly supporter of us, because giving is not a lake. You know, it's not standstill. It, it, it's a river. It flows. You know, it's an ongoing need. The need doesn't stop. And so, um, like I said, we don't charge a dime for our services. Um, we seek out grants and we rely on the support of donors who believe in what we do and think it's valuable. And uh, we've been very fortunate to be able to do that for more than 50 years. And that's a good segment. So after um, our airing of this Feel Good Friday, for the next week, we have a GoFundMe link. Any money raised on that link for next week, we will split that between NECAT and Legal Aid Society. So if people want to support Legal Aid and NECAT, go on that site and, and donate and support both of the organizations. And for more information, definitely go to Legal Aid Society's website and give them a call. If you need them. That's L-A-S. .org. L-A-S.org. Okay, so I, I seen Cameron do this before. Shauna Lynn, I'm not sure if you do this, but I like this a lot. And he says, okay, on this on this Friday, this feel good Friday, uh Darkin, what is what is one thing that you feel good about this Friday in the midst of a crazy world? I think in the midst of what is what's happened in this recent day and days. Um, has been leading to a, a, a huge reconciliation that I believe is coming. And I, I feel good about where we're going. It, it's it's in the atmosphere and it's coming. And I'm excited about it. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yes, it is. Shauna Lynn, what is yes. something on this Feel Good Friday that you feel good about, lady? I, I will say, I will echo what Ms. Walker said. Um, I think I am always an optimist. And so I always see that if a group of people make a difference in this world and bring light to it, then the light will overtake the darkness. So I will go on that same theme and say, I always believe in the light. And I think the more we can reach out to our community and to each other and help each other through this and through this pandemic and everything that's going on in this world, the better our community will be. So that's my Feel Good Friday thought. How about you, big fella? I feel good that, you know, they say to make an omelet, you got to crack some eggs. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the eggs have been cracked and we are on our way to a tasty omelet. I got the cheese and I hope you can bring the turkey because I'm not eating no pork. So bring some turkey. And oh, yeah, I got the so turkey sauce. Or some vegetables. Boom. Okay. Okay. And some vegetables. And we are on our way to a great omelet in, in America. And I feel really, really good about the future. I, I, I agree with what both of y'all are saying. It's like, finally, finally, things are being dealt with, you know? We're finally dealing with this great American dilemma. And that makes me happy to know that my kids, my I have a great uncle. My great uncle is 96 years old, right? Wow. And I was talking to him and I said, Uncle Bunny, man, how you feel about all this stuff going on? He was like, well, well, I'm hopeful. And I was like, you hopeful? You 96, you hopeful? <laughs> he was like, he you said, this lot, is the first. Fella. I know it's crazy. Look, he said, he said, this is the first time I've ever seen this many white people and black people fighting for the same thing ever. He's like, I've never seen this many white people and black people on the same page ever in my 96 years. He said, you had the hippies in the 60s. They were kind of cool, but he's like, he never seen them like this. He said, I know. The, the future for the kids, he's like, your kids are going to live in a better world than you mm -hmm. did because of what's going on now. And he's 96. So I'm like, if it's a 96 year old black man who grew up in Arkansas is hopeful, we should all be hopeful. Amen. Hey, yep. Agreed. Mm -hmm. And we all will right, end so we feel feel good, good Friday, Friday on that note. <laughs>